in a more general sense, what should our response as Muslims be to the events that have unfolded in Palestine uh, over the last four months? And how should we cope with the extent of the evil that we're seeing there? Uh, that's a big question. Big couple of questions. I think, first of all, our response should be understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained this situation uh, as a test, as a test for the people of Palestine, as a test for the Zionists, and as a test for us here outside of the immediate conflict area. So I think we have to understand that, and that, that helps us uh, from losing perspective. And certainly it's, it's a very difficult test for the, the people of Palestine in the sense that there's been so much loss, so much death, mm. and the injured, I mean, just in, incredibly difficult mm. injuries from a medical perspective under normal circumstances, mm. injuries that require amputations with no anesthesia, with no sterile hospital settings, uh, wounds, white phosphorus, burns, mm. shrapnel wounds, women having to have mm. C-sections and just under the, the most uh, primitive conditions in some circumstance. And then just attending for, for the uh, now probably 100,000 wounded, mm -hmm. the amputees, attending for people with just unimaginable burn wounds, sh shrapnel wounds, uh, keeping them clean when you're living in a tent. Mm. That's in just the worst of sanitary conditions. So there are incredible challenges. Uh, we shouldn't romanticize mm. the suffering of the Palestinian people. It's real and it's very, very challenging. But, you know, the dead, they're martyrs mm. from many different directions. And those who live, if they're patient, they're guaranteed Jannah. And so their test is patience. Our test outside of that conflict zone is shukr. Mm -hmm. Like, will we be thankful for the blessings we re enjoy, the security that we enjoy? Will we, we, will we be thankful for this food that we enjoy now? Starvation, uh, incredible malnutrition mm -hmm. that's facing the people of Gaza and increasingly the people in the West Bank. We shouldn't forget mm -hmm. yeah. the kind of pre genocidal program that's being. Uh, afflicted, uh, inflicted upon the people in, in the West Bank. Uh, so we have to be appreciative for our blessings and we have to also work to share those blessings. Like, shukru min jinsin ni'ma. Like, thankfulness is category to the blessings. If we have the blessings of security, we have to work to extend that to others. If we have the blessing of food, we have to work to share that food and find ways to extend that to others. That's our challenge. And so in, in the context of this struggle, uh, we have to do everything that we can to organize ourselves, to put ourselves in a position to make meaningful changes in the foreign policy of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's nothing to stop us except ourselves. And that's part of the test for us. Will we overcome the petty, sometimes petty differences? Will we overcome the lack of vision and the lack of leadership? and really come together and work hard to uh, affect these genocidal policies that most of the American public disagree with. Mm -hmm. you know, they disagree with this sort of blank check being given uh, to uh, Israel to just massacre, to butcher and brutalize, to de and then the massive destruction, hospitals, mm -hmm. masjid, schools, colleges, universities, the entire Church, church educational yeah. infrastructure, the entire medical mm -hmm. infrastructure, the entire uh, uh, civil uh, infrastructure, just everything wantonly destroyed. And, and the Zionists are being tested. Their test mm -hmm. is, again, the, the test of shukr, but from a different direction. Mm -hmm. They encountered on a, in Europe what the Palestinians are encountering today in Gaza. Mm -hmm. So will they be appreciative and understanding of what it means to have that power and to, to have the backing of a superpower? Mm -hmm. And will that be used for and justly or will that, that be used oppressively and tyrannically? And we see it being used tyrannically and oppressively. And they'll have to answer for that. So I think we just have to look at it in the divine scheme of things. Mm -hmm. like we have the test of 
thankfulness of brothers and sisters, both in Islam and humanity generally, and Palestine and the West Bank, they have the, the, patient, the, the test of patience. The Zionists have the thank, a test of thankfulness. Uh, and so everyone's being tested. And we'll see how well we did when the grades come out, Yom Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection and the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah. One of the things is the, the, the layers of destruction also includes the psychological that we don't talk about, the orphans and the generations of trauma that's going to come after Absolutely. this. Absolutely. The trauma is, is incredible. And I think were it not for Islam, uh, I, I don't think anyone would retain their sanity. Absolutely. And, and I think that factor, if we talk about, if we look at it in the divine scheme of things, uh, the faith being displayed and the the... the uh, resilience mm -hmm. that's rooted in faith that's imp that's impacting people all over this globe mm -hmm. so many people are inspired to look at the Quran to become Muslim because of that resilience because of that faith under the most dehumanizing mm -hmm. circumstances and situations to still be able to say I mean, God suffices me mm -hmm. Uh, this is what God has decreed and the messengers have spoken truthfully. Mm -hmm. Or verily, we come from a God, Allah, and unto Him we will all return. And so when people see that, it, it, it impacts them in a very deep way. So I think in a certain sense, our brothers and sisters in Palestine have helped to put the world back in touch with their mm -hmm. humanity. Absolutely. And unfortunately, it hasn't reached many of the Western leaders yet, but you know, they too have hearts. And hopefully there's enough humanity left in their hearts to be affected themselves. 